Hey everyone, this is Keith with CAD Sharp. I want to show you a free tool I created that you might find useful as a SolidWorks user or a CAD administrator. It's called Command Blocker. You can download it for free. Look in the description for instructions on how to do that. And uh, Command Blocker, you can access it through Tools and Command Blocker once you have it installed. And what this program will do is block certain commands from being run in SolidWorks and you can also substitute your own behavior when those commands are issued. So why would you do that? Uh, well, in some cases it would be to just prevent the user from doing something that you don't want them to do. So for example, I've heard instances where CAD admins don't want users to be able to access the custom properties dialog because they don't want the users to be modified modifying any of the values here. Um, I've also even heard examples of, of, of people wanting to stop the add-ins dialog from being accessed. Um, again, just so users don't accidentally turn off add-ins, things like that. Um, I've also heard an interesting instance, and I don't know if it'll... Yeah, it will pop up here. So I had uh, one gentleman telling me that as he is typing in some other similar command, he's accidentally clicked this on a few occasions and it's locked up his computer for as long as an hour while it accomplishes that task. And so that's a, little, a lot of time wasted and he wants the ability to block that. So uh, no matter what you're trying to block, um, what you're going to do is figure out what that command's value is. And by value, I'm referring to the value that's used in this enumeration. And if you don't know anything about SolidWorks API, it doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you that there's this huge table that has um, integer values that correspond to basically any command you can issue in SolidWorks. And if we find that value, and then we go into Tools, Command Blocker, and put it in here. Um, so for example, zero I know is creating, uh, or no, just opening a SolidWorks model. One is creating a new model. Um, if I click save, it should stop me from doing this. This command is not available, that's the default. And then um, likewise, if I, if I went to new, it'd do um, the same thing as well. So if you want to figure out what the command is for some, you know, some functionality that you want to block, what you can do is click this button, start listening. As soon as you click that, it's going to close the dialog, and then every um, command you issue in SolidWorks from here on out, it's going to tell you what that integer value is. Now I have found a few instances where it will not tell you, for example, I know that there is a, a corresponding command for closing um, this uh, feature manager browser, browser pane. We're not getting the dialog to pop up in that case telling us what the value is, but for the most case, or for the most part, we are getting a pop-up. So for example, if we go to File Properties, we see that this is 963. So this listener is pretty accurate, um, but uh, you you might find that some functionality is missing. For the most part, I think if you click a button, you will be able to discover it. So for example, the new is one, like I said. All right, so now if we go back here, settings, there's even a command for opening up this uh, settings dialog, 963 click save oh, and also click stop listening save and now if we go to properties you see that it's blocked and I also mentioned that you can substitute your own functionality and the way we're going to do that is also by going to this dialog and by specifying what macro we want to run instead of the default behavior so I actually have a macro written uh, doesn't do much, but, um, oops, no, that's not the right one, it's this one. So it does nothing more but display a message box that says uh, new functionality. But what's important to know um, in this macro is that it is, the the code that we're trying to run is in the module called in main and the sub-procedure called main. That's important to know because 
whenever we apply these um, arguments, we need to know those values. So the way we're going to run that macro instead is uh, putting in the integer value for the command itself, then putting in a comma, putting in the path to um, the, the uh, macro. And I believe this is the path macro1.swp, and then a comma, and the name of the um, module. I'm not certain if it has to be case sensitive, probably not, but anyway, we'll make it case sensitive. And then that procedure, like I mentioned. And now we're going to save this. And by the way, if you put this in incorrectly or don't put in the right number of arguments, it should error out and let you know that this path doesn't exist or whatever. But anyway, we're going to put it in correctly. Click Save and then go to File Properties. And instead of showing that default message, this um, command is not available per administrative settings. It should run that macro I just showed you. And indeed it does. So hopefully you can see how this might be of some use to you or your organization. Again, if you want to download it, just look in the description. If you want to learn more about how the add-in actually works from a SOLIDWORKS API perspective, go to the blog post in the description below and learn more about it. So tell me what you think about this in the comments. Um, subscribe if you would. And uh, yeah, we'll see you back here soon.